Gosh, it's hard to believe it's been 50 years. March 1, 1972, the Buffalo River became America's first national river. I was still a junior in college, but it didn't take much longer until I spent the rest of my life uh, on the Buffalo National River. Um, it was really interesting. Ponca was a simpler town back then. Life was so much simpler. Life along the Buffalo River was much harder, actually. The tourism business had not really flourished uh, yet. Early traffic on the river was just a, a handful of numbers on weekends in the springtime. And so you struggle to really make a living, to, to have enough food on the table and to pay the electric bill and the phone bill. And you had to figure out how to make a living. So. I did a lot of things from cutting firewood to hauling rocks, uh, learned to run a backhoe, and I, I did everything I could do to match those empty months. We learned a lot in those days. It was all dirt roads, so uh, you had to carry extra spares because it wasn't uncommon to have more than one flat a day. You know, back then we used pickup trucks. Uh, we hauled people. We still shuttled mostly cars, but we if we had to haul people, they were hauled in the back of a pickup truck. Uh, our canoe trailers were just old canoe trailers. They didn't have licenses. They, they weren't uh, tagged as to who they belonged to. Uh, there was no such thing as uh, ABS plastic or uh, Rotomo plastic or any of the, the modern canoes that we use now. They were all aluminum. And so after a weekend of renting canoes, you would spend the next couple of days with a three pound hammer in one hand and a ball peen hammer in the other hand and a mouthful of rivets replacing rivets in the canoes to keep the thing from leaking. That was sort of the challenges of the early days of canoe rentals. And you know, America's first national river, it just didn't get that way because it's not special. It's truly a very special river.